In patients who have mycosis fungoides or Cesare syndrome, rash due to disease relapse or drug eruption can look very similar. Distinguishing between them is crucial. The consequences of misinterpreting a rash as being rooted in the disease itself can lead to the premature discontinuation of effective therapy. So how can you differentiate between the two? It's not always easy. This is something I have learned and experienced myself in the course of treating patients. In an ideal circumstance, the treatment-related rash would look very different from a rash caused by disease relapse. But unfortunately, in many cases, it doesn't. A drug eruption can present similarly in cutaneous T-cell lymphoma patients with patches and plaques. Differentiating rash types is important, so I follow a few steps when evaluating patients who have MF or Cesare syndrome, two types of CTCL. In the event of a new skin eruption, the first step is to perform a biopsy or even a couple of biopsies. Next steps include immunophenotyping, which is a thorough analysis of the morphology of patches and plaques and T-cell receptor sequencing. If the patient was already in the advanced stages of disease at the initiation of treatment, peripheral blood flow cytometry is also important to look for circulating cells. This will give you a rounded workup that will help you and your team determine whether a rash is due to worsening disease or is a result of treatment. A dermatopathology consult can help provide a definitive diagnosis and help determine next steps. It is important to effectively manage a patient's expectations about the potential for treatment-related rash prior to starting therapy. There are several things I tell patients about the possibility for drug eruptions with potiligeo. First, it helps for patients to be reminded that potiligeo is an FDA-approved treatment. In the Maverick trial, the incidence of rash or drug eruption was 35%. The incidence of drug eruption alone was 24%. In the clinical trial that led to the approval, 35% of patients experienced rash or drug eruption and 7% discontinued treatment due to rash or drug eruption. So experiencing rash is certainly not unexpected. If a mild or grade one rash occurs, including drug eruption, consider treating it with topical corticosteroids. Treatment with potiligeo may continue during that time. However, if rash is moderate or severe or grade two or three, interrupt potiligeo and administer at least two weeks of topical corticosteroids. If rash improves to grade one or less, potiligeo may be resumed. If life-threatening or grade four rash is suspected, stop treatment and do not resume it unless Steven Johnson syndrome or toxic epidermal necrolysis have been excluded and the cutaneous reaction has been resolved to grade one or less. Managing expectations upfront is crucial in helping patients manage a drug eruption should one occur. It's important to monitor patients for drug eruption throughout treatment with potiligeo. A multidisciplinary approach involving hematology, oncology, and dermatology is optimal when managing patients with MF or Cesare syndrome. In the event of drug eruption, the most important member of that multidisciplinary team is the patient themselves. Staying in close communication with the patient can help them manage their rash and continue their treatment with potiligeo. Getting a nurse or a nurse practitioner proactively involved with the patient can help make this communication easier. A nurse or nurse practitioner can provide thorough education about supportive care and ensure that the patient remains compliant with their drug eruption management. 
this is especially important for those patients who have a low tolerance for skin symptoms as a nurse or nurse practitioner can help them continue therapy when appropriate. In our practice, we have a nurse coordinator who helps set expectations with patients and discusses all remaining questions they may have after speaking with me or another doctor in the practice. The nurse coordinator is generally the person who a patient reaches out to first in the event of new or worsening rash. Not only does having a team in place help with proactive management of treatment-related rash, but it also helps the patient feel safe and well taken care of while experiencing this rash, whether it's due to drug eruption, disease flare, or a combination of the two. Increasing adherence to treatment with Potiligeo starts with the proper management of patient expectations. The main side effect that I look for is rash. This is what patients need to hear early on and have reinforced multiple times. I believe it's important to be really clear about drug eruption up front, so it doesn't take them by surprise in the event it occurs. I would also advise other clinicians to monitor closely for drug eruptions. This will allow for early intervention and accurate differentiation between drug eruptions and rashes caused by disease relapse. And of course, clinicians should advise patients about the risk as well as the benefits of continuing therapy with potiligio in the event drug eruption does occur. This is where involving nurses or nurse practitioners can be a huge help as they can educate and support patients and encourage compliance with supportive care. I think there are a lot of benefits to having your MF and Cesare syndrome patients on non-chemotherapeutic options. A non-chemotherapeutic option, such as a targeted biologic therapy for mycosis fungoides or Cesare syndrome, can make a difference when there's blood involvement and improved skin symptoms. In the end, chemotherapy has a role but should be reserved for patients with extremely severe disease. Targeted therapies can be used in those patients who have been more recently diagnosed or whose disease has not progressed too far. Indication. Potoligio mogamulizumab KPKC injection for intravenous infusion is indicated for the treatment of adult patients with relapsed or refractory mycosis fungoides, MF, or Cesare syndrome, SS, after at least one prior systemic therapy. Important safety information, warnings and precautions. Dermatologic toxicity. Monitor patients for rash throughout the course of treatment. For patients who experienced dermatologic toxicity in trial one, the median time to onset was 15 weeks with 25% of cases occurring after 31 weeks. Interrupt potoligio for moderate or severe rash, grades two or three. Permanently discontinue potoligio for life-threatening grade four rash or for any Stevens-Johnson syndrome, SJS, or toxic epidermal necrolysis, 10. Infusion reactions. Most infusion reactions occur during or shortly after the first infusion. Infusion reactions can also occur with subsequent infusions. Monitor patients closely for signs and symptoms of infusion reactions and interrupt the infusion for any grade reaction and treat promptly. Permanently discontinue potoligio for any life-threatening grade four infusion reaction. Infections. Monitor patients for signs and symptoms of infection and treat promptly. Autoimmune complications. Interrupt or permanently discontinue potoligio as appropriate for suspected immune-mediated adverse reactions. Consider the benefit-risk of potoligio in patients with a history of autoimmune disease. Complications of allogeneic HSCT after potoligio. Increased risk of transplant complications have been reported in patients who received allogeneic HSCT after potoligio. Follow patients closely for early evidence of transplant-related complications. Adverse reactions. 
The most common adverse reactions reported in greater than or equal to 10% of patients with podoligio in the clinical trial were rash, including drug eruption, 35%, infusion reaction, 33%, fatigue, 31%, diarrhea, 28%, drug eruption, 24%, upper respiratory tract infection, 22%, musculoskeletal pain 22%, skin infection 19%, pyrexia 17%, edema 16%, nausea 16%, headache 14%, thrombocytopenia 14%, constipation 13%, anemia 12%, mucositis 12%, cough 11%, and hypertension 10%. You are encouraged to report suspected adverse reactions to Kiowa Kieran Incorporated at 1-844-768-3544 or FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088 or fda.gov slash medwatch.